I used to wonder why I couldn't reach success in business. I had so much knowledge, and yet guys who knew much less were making much more money. I got depressed, thinking that I was a failed entrepreneur. Then I discovered a secret from an ancient book of India. This secret told that there are four different types of people, each with their own set of abilities and activities. And they use this to understand what type of work to do. Because doing work that goes against one's nature leads to frustration, lack of meaning, and disengagement at work. So, why is this important today? Gallup, a workplace consulting and global research firm, revealed what is happening behind the scenes of many companies. They analyzed over 100,000 business units in 96 countries. They found that 80% of the world's employees are disengaged at work. As any manager knows, a disengaged employee is a less productive employee. Their research shows that business units with engaged workers have 23% higher profit compared with business units with miserable workers. This means that if you are a company with 10 million in profit, that's an extra 2 million. Gallup goes on to answer the question, what promotes employee engagement? They said, people want purpose and meaning from their work. They want to be known for what they're good at. Let's face it though, for most people in the world, work is a way to just pay the bills. The idea of purpose and meaning may seem unrelated. From the perspective of the four Vedic personality types, when all four are aware of their nature and working together like a body, then things like meaning and success become an easy side effect. Just as a body has a head, arms, a torso, and legs, in the same way the four personality types work together to serve each other. Now imagine, the arms are missing, but the rest of the body is healthy and intact. So even though three out of four components are functioning, it will greatly hinder doing anything practical in life. By understanding ourselves and others, we can collaborate effectively. So these are the four types, together with their original Sanskrit names. Each has an inborn way they approach work, with four different motivations, expectations, and natural talents. It's important to clarify that from the caste system of India to the corporate hierarchies, this system makes no distinction of less or more important. Just like your arm is not less important than your leg, it just helps with a different set of tasks. The first type is the leader warrior type. These are the natural born leaders, the ones who care about justice and protection. Think of the samurai of Japan or in India, everyone knows Lord Ram. They are highly competitive and will push through everything to reach their goals. However, they will also respect and care for the people around them and not just run over them. Even when they fight on the battlefield of life and business, they will stick to their moral principles more than any of the other types. They make the perfect CEO or manager because they are very good at making fast decisions, keeping everyone moving in the same direction, and also caring that everyone is treated justly and fairly. Next is the merchant creator type. These are the ones who always have the next great business idea and will enthusiastically wave their arms around as they tell you about it and then get everyone around them to buy in. Their strengths are the ease and ability to make friends and inspire people. They create fun and good times around them. They're enthusiastic and their enthusiasm is contagious and that is why they make the best salespeople. They can position and present anything to make it appear valuable. Their weaknesses are they often have trouble sticking to one thing for a long time, or sometimes taking advantage of people for money, and therefore require the leader type 
to run the actual business part. Merchants find the same fulfillment in the economic marketplace that a warrior type finds on the sports field. Next is a laborer maker type. This type has the natural ability to work with the hands and are very practical. Whatever great architectural wonders of the world we see today were made by this type. They're the most patient and enduring of all the types and can do the monotonous tasks which the other types find dreadful. They have a stubborn determination to just keep going, whatever the work is. They're also the most caring and social of all the types. They value family and caring for the customers and co-workers. Next is the educator guide type. These are the consultants of the world. In a company, they should advise and consult the leader types. We can still see this even in today's politics, where a president has an advisory board. They're always learning and exploring, and they work best with ideas and knowledge rather than day-to-day -day practical work. More than any of the other types, they have a broad-minded and wide view of multiple topics. Because of this, they are usually reserved and do not push their help on others. When not working in a company, they will go into positions of teaching, coaching, or even leading movement like Gandhi did. When you want to innovate to grow a business, this is the type you need. Now, of course, this was a brief overview, just like if I tried to describe Africa or America in a few sentences. You're probably wondering, now, which type are you? And in a few minutes, I'm going to give you a website link where you can learn more. First, I want to give you an example of how this works on a practical level. A few years ago, I started working with a warrior leader type who had just started a new marketing company in Switzerland. There was a couple laborer maker types and myself as the educator guide type, but we did not have a merchant creator type in the team. So a couple of things happened. First, because we had no merchant creator type, we struggled to get sales. And eventually the leader had to take on that role and personality, which meant that he could not focus on his role to develop and stabilize the business operations, which led to a lot of stressful emergencies. Basically, the company grew much slower than it could have if we would have had that fourth missing type involved as well. Secondly, because I was an educator guide type, I naturally found out innovative things the company could do to stay ahead of the trends, which resulted in the company finding a new niche market and becoming the number one story brand marketing agency in Switzerland. Again, the other three types are usually not tuned into innovation and new things as much. So a company without the educator guide type being given sufficient freedom to explore, they end up stagnating after a while. In fact, Statistics say that over 90% of new businesses do not survive past five years. And I believe it is because of an unbalanced and incomplete team. Here's what this looks like as a life cycle of a business. The merchant has a great idea. Then a leader steps in to manage the laborers and consults with the guide to go to the next level. At which point the merchant type gets going again and the company grows. So if we now develop an understanding of and use these four types, society can enter a new era. These four personality types are just as alive and ingrained in every human today as they were in ancient times. It's like a lost science in the same way that Ayurvedic medicine was a lost science for doctors in the West. So where to start? I want to again reference what Gallup pointed out about that massive disengagement at work. In their summary, they said, the real fix is simple, better leaders in the workplace. Managers need to be better listeners, coaches and collaborators. Great managers help colleagues learn and grow, recognizing their colleagues for doing great work and make them feel truly cared about. In environments like this, workers thrive. So first, help to ensure that qualified leader types get the right positions in a business. Leaders who understand these four types will be able to build the future of work. Furthermore, 
It's the leaders who define the purpose and goals, so they need to ensure people with matching values to enter the team. Second, understand yourself and your type. If you find that you are not doing what you should be doing, make small steps to move in the right direction. A verse from the Vedas says, it is better to be bad at what you do than good at what is bad for you. Everyone comes with gifts matching their identity. And when you understand your identity, then you understand your gifts and tools and how to use them. If you want to start with some information and a free personality test, visit vedicpersonalitytypes.com. Third, learn about these four types. By understanding other people's needs and personalities, you will have more success interacting with them. To conclude, I believe that the future of work can be bright, and when teams including the four types collaborate together, each understanding their natural talents and abilities and are able to use them to the fullest, thus benefiting themselves, their team, and the entire world. Thank you.